In Britain, independent inventor Malcolm Higgins is developing a machine that will help combat rail fatigue by cleaning rails without damaging them. I didn't know anything about lasers. I didn't know anything about trains. I'm not an engineer, so I seemed well qualified to take this idea forward. High-tech mobile maintenance is the key to keeping high-speed trains on track. Currently, the biggest problem rail operators face is keeping rails free from damaging leaf residue. You can see here a fairly typical example of dirty rail. The black area here gives some idea of what leaf residue looks like. Vortices along the side of the train pick up the leaves and actually force them in between the wheel and the rail. Repeated roll-ins of the wheels uh, actually roll them into this Teflon-like coating on the surface. Then when you get water on it as well, uh, becomes like a skid pan. Delays caused by leaves on the line have become a national joke in Britain, but in reality they occur in every country and can make trains skid through red signals. Currently, rail companies use high-pressure jets of water and sandite, a kind of abrasive gel, to try to combat the problem. But this method is not 100% efficient and comes with its own set of problems. Leaving behind tough grains of sand only increases the chance of track fatigue and the potential for damaged rails. Malcolm's invention will revolutionise the whole approach to rail maintenance. For four years, his team have been experimenting with laser light as a means of stripping leaf residue from the rail. Soon, it will be tested out on the real rail network. First of all, we have the laser itself. This laser is just a prototype version at the moment. Effectively, we will be producing power that's ten times more than this type of lasers produced before in the world, which is an awful lot of energy to have to control. All of this is delivered through fibre optic cable, which uh, routes its way down through the container to the railhead, uh, and that's where the business end is. Here we have the fibre optic coming down into something called an optical box. We have here 25,000 pulses of light a second being delivered onto the track. We're keeping the light contained by this bottom shoe that protects us all and makes sure that the light that we're using doesn't cause any damage to our eyes or indeed to any little thing that might be by the side of the track or anything like that. Each little pulse of energy that we deliver uh, is 5,000 degrees centigrade, but all of that energy is absorbed by the contamination that's on the railhead. So if you put your hand on straight afterwards, uh, you wouldn't feel any heat in the process at all. Malcolm's invention could be fully operational within two years. But there is one foolproof way to avoid problems with high-speed corners and faulty rails altogether completely rebuild the network. The world's fastest trains are designed to run on purpose-built straight track and have broken records in the process. The fastest railways in the world have tracks built specifically for them. Exclusive, dedicated tracks, free from sharp bends, incur less wear and tear and make the system much safer too. The Japanese really came up with the concept of a dedicated track and a dedicated trains that just went, that went very fast. It really was a revolutionary concept. It was market driven by the numbers of people that simply want to move from A to B to C to D, all in a straight line. That makes it a doddle to design a train to do that. For over 30 years, the Shinkansen bullet has been rocketing between Tokyo and Osaka at 160 miles an hour, until recently quicker than any other train system on Earth. For train designers planet-wide, the bullet has proved itself as the icon of high-speed train travel. Like the bullet, the French TGV system relies on fast trains running on specially built straight tracks. These trains don't need to tilt as the system has done away with sharp corners completely. 
The TGV, or Train à Grande Vitesse, is the modern champion of speed, regularly topping 170 miles an hour. During tests in 1990, an experimental TGV hit a staggering 320.3 miles an hour, setting a new world record. <laughs> The TGV's secret of success is in its engineering. There are half the number of wheel assemblies, known as bogies, giving the carriages an ultra-low centre of gravity and vastly reducing the overall weight and friction of the train. The TGV is also possibly the safest train system in the world. The positioning of the bogies reduces sideways forces on the carriages, making derailing much less likely. Part of the reason that it has never been involved in a fatal accident. It's truly a source of envy for France's neighbours. We somehow got caught up in all the red tape and were unable to do something as simple as the French, which is put one pantograph on the front of the engine and run a cable down the train and power the back car. And that simple piece of technology enabled the TGV to get up and going and they could just clamp multiple units together and run huge trains throughout the length of the network. In the not too distant future, French technology is set to revolutionize rail travel for one of its neighbors. Currently, a fleet of 27 multi-million pound Eurostar trains connect France and the UK through the Channel Tunnel rail link. An adaptation of the TGV, the Eurostar locomotives generate power equivalent to 130 car engines as the train hurtles towards the French side of the tunnel at 186 miles an hour. Now, new Eurostar track is being laid between the Channel Tunnel and London to bring trains on the English side up to speed. A massive civil engineering enterprise that has involved uprooting whole villages. When the new link opens, trains will travel at 186 miles an hour for the first time in Britain, and a journey from the heart of Paris to the centre of London will take just over two and a half hours, shaving 20 minutes off the current time. <laughs> High-speed train systems that run on dedicated track are so reliable that accidents are extremely uncommon. But at these kinds of speeds, one tiny flaw can lead to catastrophe. The Intercity Express is Germany's answer to the TGV. It uses lightweight alloys, tilts like the Pendolino, and has a top speed of 174 miles an hour. When the ICE derailed in 1999, it became the worst German rail disaster in 20 years. Travelling at 125 miles an hour, the fourth carriage derailed, sending the rest of the train ploughing into a bridge. 102 people died. What nobody had accounted for was an unexpected fault in a new type of wheel called the Bochum 84. It was a tragic end to the ICE's 100% record for safety. The ICE accident highlighted a problem that all railways face, that mechanical parts can fail without warning. If you want to go even faster and remain safe, modern thinking suggests you have to do away with rails and wheels altogether. In Japan, this experimental train with wings works on the same principle as a piece of paper dropping to the floor. It's kept afloat by a cushion of air. The aero train has no brakes. It has to use a parachute to stop. Even more ingenious, researchers are developing trains known as maglevs that also skim above their tracks, this time suspended on a cushion of magnetism. 
In 1999, an experimental maglev in Japan sped to 343 miles an hour, breaking the passenger train world record previously held by the TGV. Magnetic levitation was first developed in the 1960s by British inventor Professor Eric Laithwaite. This is a linear motor, and that's just a fancy name for a row of electromagnets. This is a sheet of aluminium. When I put it on the motor and switch on the magnets, something pretty dramatic occurs. I try and put it back now. You see, I can hold it with finger and thumb because it tries to float. But it isn't stable sideways. If I get it a bit off center, it tends to fly off. Let it go, and there you have propulsion without physical contact. Like Lathwaite's linear motor, the maglev track contains a row of powerful electromagnets that create enough upward force on magnets in the train to lift it into the air. And that when switched on in rapid succession, provide enough horizontal force to propel it forward. To break, the magnetic field is simply reversed and magnetic forces act on the train in the opposite direction. Today, a prototype in Emsland, Germany, carries passengers around a 20-mile test track at super high speeds. Maglevs don't need to tilt. The track is already steeply banked to 12 degrees to accommodate high-speed bends. There is no motor on the train, it's in the track, making the maglev far lighter than normal trains, and even though it consumes a third less power, its acceleration is four times better than the TGVs. And with no wheels touching the track, friction is minimal. There is no danger of rail fatigue or wheel failure, and the train can reach astonishing speeds. People often ask, uh, what is the maximum speed possible for a maglev train? Today, it would be possible to, to maintain uh, higher speeds of about 600, 700 kilometers per hour. Germany is famous in the world for engineering capacities, but I think even in other countries, uh, it would have been possible to build up or develop a system like this. Maglev technology already has truly international appeal. The German design is on a fast track to China. The world's first commercial maglev between Shanghai and its airport opens in 2004, reducing the journey time from 45 to 8 minutes. The system is expected to carry 10 million passengers, rising to a predicted 20 million by 2010. If it proves a success, China plans to build a massive intercity network of 270 mile an hour maglev trains to ease the burden on its overcrowded transport system. For the future of maglev technology, the sky is quite literally the limit. In America, scientists at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center are developing a maglev train that could propel their spacecraft skywards. Heading the team is Dr. Ken House. Okay, come on. 